Chris Mannix from SI.com here in San Antonio, joined by Ben Golliver. Ben, we're now four years into the Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, LeBron James, Big Three era. How would you evaluate these last four years? Well, I'll give him a B plus. I don't think it was perfect. I think they maybe left uh, some wins and some uh, titles even on the table a little bit. They probably could have had that series against Dallas if they had prepared a little bit differently, if they had gotten into some of the small ball stuff earlier. But at this point, I think they lost to San Antonio, and San Antonio was the better team. So I don't really hold that one against them. It is impressive, the four straight finals, but I do kind of put an asterisk on that because Eastern Conference really hasn't gotten its stuff together. You know what I mean? And I think if you're in the Western Conference with the same team, I mean, how many times are they actually getting to the finals? And that's a big open question at this point. Yeah, I think there's some definite truth to that but I do think that anyone that thinks this experiment of these three guys coming together is a failure is nuts I mean this is a team that has been to four straight NBA finals that has won two championships on the on the lighter side you can say they moved merchandise they sold tickets uh, they spiked the TV ratings in the local market exponentially during their time here I don't think you can look at this as anything other than a roaring success yes they did lose some series but you know go back to 2011 the team comes together for the first time how many teams have we seen come together fail much worse than the Miami Heat did in 2000 2011. And as you mentioned, this San Antonio team, I'm not convinced any team in basketball in the last five years could beat this San Antonio team. They're that good and that dynamic on both ends of the floor. No, I'm with you. I mean, it, you can't take the two titles away from them, no question about it. And Eric Spolster said that in his postgame comments tonight. He said, you know, we don't feel it right now. He said they feel pretty bad right now. But when they look back in the summer, they're going to find the perspective that says, hey, we did win two. We did get to four straight finals. Uh, and we did a lot of things. They really changed the landscape of the entire league, right? I mean, they were the next super team to come along. And everybody else had to react to them. And when you're the, the centerpiece, you're going to take a lot of criticism. I think that in general, they weathered all of that criticism fairly well uh, throughout the losses, throughout the ups and downs. And to me, I don't think they should break this up. I think they should keep this thing going. Yeah, they got spanked by a really, really good team, and there's really no shame in that. But you mentioned the future and keeping this thing going. And how, what's the likelihood, do you think, that we see this group back together next year? You know, it's up in the air at this point. I understand that they got a lot of contract decisions to make. They got a lot of holes to plug if, you know, a Battier retires and some of these other guys maybe walk as free agents. But if I'm LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, I'm thinking – that trio alone, if you surround it with the right role players, is still better than anybody else in the Eastern Conference. That means you're going to be in position to go to a fifth straight finals. That means you could potentially go for a third title uh, during your reign together. I'm not sure why you break that up. I don't know who is supposed to challenge them in the Eastern Conference next year. I don't see a clear contender. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we're in a dark place for Miami right now because they did get beaten the way they did in the finals, but they just breezed through the yeah. Eastern Conference. I mean, they just they crushed a, you know Indiana team that was supposed to be their nemesis. They beat them up in six relatively easy games. Going in to next year the Pacers will be back maybe you have the Bulls to contend with but there really isn't a, a Spurs team out there even an Oklahoma City type team out there for you to get worried about moreover I do think that if Oklahoma City had wound up in this final series Miami would have had an easier time with them I Miami agree. tends to match up better with a team like Oklahoma City that plays one-on-one -on -one. they just went up against a great team that like we said I don't think that anyone uh, could actually have beaten now there are going to be some key decisions to be made I fully expect LeBron James to opt out yeah. I fully expect Chris Bosh to opt out I'm not entirely sure yet about Dwayne Wade. By him opting out, he leaves close to $40 million on the table. And I don't know what, in Wade's condition, the way his knee has deteriorated over the last couple of years, I'm not so sure he does that. I think if these guys all come back, though, what they have to do first and foremost is just ex get that bench right. Get those, get some youth, get some athleticism, get some younger legs that can uh, compete with some of these teams out there. And as we saw with San Antonio, find some specialists. I thought they really missed Mike Miller in this series. Oh, no I thought doubt he was it. a guy that they could have used, you know, both at playing the power four position, kind of a hybrid role, rebounding the basketball for a big guard and making open three-point shots. They just have to get a little deeper and a little stronger off the bench, and they can be back here too. I think Wade is the biggest question, right? And I think if he had had the series maybe he had against Indiana or he played earlier in the playoffs here in the finals, we're talking about, hey, he's going to opt out and get a huge deal. He ended on a very flat note. I think you'd probably agree, right? I mean, I think he looked outclassed at times. He looked overwhelmed by Kawhi Leonard and, and some of the other younger Spurs at times he didn't have the lift going to the basket he didn't shoot the ball very well lots of questions and you know that's on top of only playing you know 50 something games during the regular season so if you're Miami uh, that's going to be more of a, a negotiation than maybe than you thought it would be initially and if you're Dwayne Wade you're probably going to get a little bit more pushback than you probably expected maybe two months ago uh, to me that's the really defining question for the Heat's offseason everything else is going to sort of fall into place after that domino is resolved all right play devil's advocate for me LeBron James opts out and goes somewhere else he goes where? Oh, man, it's, that's the thing. I don't really see a clear option for him. If I'm him, I'm not going anywhere to the Western Conference. That's number one because I don't want to play and have all that competition, and you don't want to be the guy who goes out like Chris Paul in the conference semifinals, and now people are saying you've taken a huge step backwards. I don't think Cleveland makes a lot of sense. 
Uh, the other situations are going to have to involve complicated sign-in trades. I mean, to me, Miami is clearly the most obvious place that he should be staying. Yeah, we've romanticized Cleveland enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. Cleveland has a decent roster, the number one overall pick, but they have no coach right now, and I don't think they're in a better position than Miami is to get to the finals in the next three years. And LeBron has to start looking at the end of his career now. He's 29 years old. This next deal is going to tie him up for the rest of his prime years. Only three, four more years probably at best of him playing at the highest, highest possible level. He needs to find the best situation. The Lakers, I agree with you, going to play with Kobe for a couple of years. Never. That just doesn't seem like the right fit. The Knicks don't have the salary cap space this summer to go out there and make a big move for him. He's going to flirt with some teams. You know that. He might even invite them into his home, yeah. have them give their sales pitch. But at the end of the day, if Miami can convince him that they can – add to this roster they can make themselves stronger over the next couple of months i think he comes back too i'm with you for ben Galler, i'm chris mannix that's it from san antonio